What's up, everybody? Dan Campbell is at it again. He gives us some great quotes, and we love it, especially this time of year when what else are we going to make videos on? Well, last year, there was a no turd policy when it came to drafting for the Detroit Lions and players they wanted on their team. And this year, he's given us a new thing. Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? What is not going to be allowed in Allen Park or <laughs> or anywhere near the Detroit Lions facility this year? Yeah, so he, he's like you said, last year, he called it a no turd policy. Same thing this year. <laughs> he's hilarious. calling it a no floater. And he first goes on to say, Hey, me and me and Brad are on the same page. We want guys that love ball. Oh yeah. And also that got to be explosive, right? All these things. But what yeah. he's talking about when a floater, a floater is a guy who gets here and just kind of, there he goes. He's just op in the open ocean. We want guys that are highly competitive and they love ball. They're not going to be perfect. They may not always say the right things, but boy, do they love ball. And I think Craig, there we go. that is, that's so huge because you 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 gotta just love this sport. I mean, you 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 really do. I mean, you're putting your body on the line. You have to love this. And I think there are guys that really like football and they're really good and you're really athletic and you play at, you know, let's say Oklahoma and things are good and you've just gotten recruited and you just keep going. And next thing you know, you're in the NFL. But that's right. What about the guys that love the game, man? And and that's that's who we're getting, and that's what's huge. That's huge. That's massive. And and I think when you you can see it yeah, and um, all over Twitter uh, this this day uh, and yesterday, they had that camera when players are coming off the practice field, they're mm -hmm. walking back into the facility and it's kind of a swag check, but also a how you feeling check. And they look at it, they're like, how am I feeling? And you get to see how happy all these guys are to be playing football. Those are the guys you want on the team, the guys that love to play ball. That's what he's talking about with the no floaters and stuff. And even guys like Williams, who infamously on draft night was like, we're not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. Right. And we're just like, Ooh, that is a, that's a bad interview. Well, all of a sudden when he's in his element and he's able to play football, well, he's not playing football because of the ACL, but he had a football in his hands. Like he's as happy as can be. Oh, and you can see it. it and he's joking around with reporters. He's having a good time. Like, cause he's back on the field. And, you, and I think like, that's what you want to see. And that's what Campbell and Holmes are looking for. You, you look at the guys and it's like Jamal Williams. He, he just loves football. He's Life. been asked, why, why are you in a good mood? Why do you, why do you so optimistic? He's like, I just, I love the game. I love playing. I love playing this. I love being out here. And that is, yeah. it's in, I would say every team is saying something to that degree, but they really stuck to it. And I, when it was our bad because we thought the lions should go with Thibodeau and we were wrong on that. I mean, because we were wrong. I'm seeing him at draft day and I'm just, he's playing chess and in the green room, he's wearing a like 19. What is he wearing? Like a fifth. I don't know what he's doing. And I'm just like, I don't want that, man. I don't. That's the stuff that we don't want. We want guys so hungry to win, watch film. Yep. You name every part of football. We want them all in. And that's what Brad and Dan are like. That's what we want. It's like, Okay. And they, they don't even know each other coming into this whole thing. And they're just like, they love each other because they're thinking the same way. So it's huge. And generally the talent level isn't going to be that much different. So Agreed. when you look at a guy like Thibodeau compared to Hutch, like, I don't think, I think most of us would have an argument one way or the other, who is better. And I think you'd get a pretty big split on that. So when you also have Hutch as the guy with the personality and the just absolute love and obsession with the game of football. Like if you can fill your locker room with a bunch of guys that love the game of football while their individual talent level will go up as a whole, as a collective, they're going to make each other better. Like we, we do this all the time, whether it's in school, in a classroom, you know, you have the good classrooms, you have the bad classrooms, whether it's on a high school team, a college team, a professional team. I think sometimes we get confused that because they're paid to play, that's all you need. That's like, right. because you're going to hand them a paycheck, they must love the game and they will put a hundred percent effort in every time they hit the field, every time they practice when nobody's looking and all that kind of stuff. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to pay people for their talent, but there's a difference between those who absolutely freaking love the game. They're going to put the work in, in the facility, outside the facility and they're going to eat, li like eat, sleep, whatever 
football. And I'm not saying that's the only guy you can have, but it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't it really hurt. doesn't. And, and especially in our franchise where we're trying to rebuild, things have been down. You can't have this guy that the second you lose three in a row, he's just like, I don't know about that. You know what I mean? Like you, you yeah. gotta have a guy so hungry to turn things around, get in there. And that just, you can't fake that. Like you cannot right. fake. I love it. I want, I want to be out here. Cause you're going to go through injuries. I mean, there's just so many things. It, football is hard and uh, it's, it's just great to see. I think what, what I'm most excited about is seeing Brad and Dan on the same page. And they keep saying that over yeah. and over and we've, we know enough oh, about man. Dan Campbell. I don't know about Brad Holmes. I mean, he doesn't do a ton of interviews, but when he talks, you know what? I don't know. But when when Dan Campbell talks, I got to like we've heard him enough now. Like he's not lying or you know, no. like he's he's so serious and just and like, if he Dan is lying, you can tell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like he loves they, they have an idea of getting guys that love football. And obviously the other things come in. But your your point is perfect where. Hey, the, the talent is right here, but man, yeah, I, I heard a, um, an executive say everybody in the NFL is so close. The only difference is your culture. Like that is yeah. now, obviously if you have Aaron Rodgers or Tom prime, Tom Brady, okay. That's a little, that, that helps too. But at the end of the day, right. yeah, there's, can your culture, what is your culture like? And we, we just, I mean, when Matt Patricia was here, what was that culture? When, you know, you just, we just have not had a thing that just fall on to. So this is our culture is just like guys that love football. The gritty thing too. We hear that all the time. Yeah. You hear that all the time, guys that love football, but also you look at Patricia and the culture that was garbage there uh, with essentially the same roster that Caldwell had. He took a team that went nine and seven and First year won what five games, mm. you know, and, and I, th I think it was five and 11 or something like that. So I'm not confident on that, but also the last time we had good culture, like it was really good culture under Caldwell. Mm -hmm. And when you look at those teams, go back and look at the roster. Like, don't take my word for it. Go back and look at the roster. There was some good talent on those teams. You had Stafford, you had Sue, you had Glover fairly you had Johnson, stuff like that. Yeah. Like you had some good players. There was no depth on those teams. And there were, there were holes all over the place, but yet they were a borderline playoff team because of one word, culture, yep. right? And, and I think the players absolutely loved and respected Jim Caldwell, and it was for a different reason than why they love and respect uh, Dan Campbell, but they do. It's very, very obvious. The mm -hmm. interviews are no longer workmanlike. They are players like actually talking about what they're feeling, what they're seeing players being open about how much they love playing in Detroit. Uh, and it's not for the weather. I promise mm -hmm. you that. Mm -hmm. And so they openly love playing in Detroit. They say they want to be back. And I know players are supposed to say that, but correct me if I'm wrong. We didn't hear that for the three years before Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes were here. We no. didn't hear, I want to come back. It was more along the lines of like, yeah, I mean, like we're working on a deal. You know, I mean like that there's a it difference was, in the way people say it. They didn't know. They didn't know up from down. They didn't know if they could say things. They didn't know if they're supposed yeah. to. Cause I mean the whole thing, right. We never saw any of the behind the scenes, um, you know, uh, not called well, but Patricia didn't want any cameras, any, Nothing. you know, there was just, and it's like, where these guys are like be yourself, man. And it's just, it's huge. And if you're yourself all the time, guess where else you're going to be yourself on the football field. Mm -hmm. And you're, if you don't have to second guess yourself in the practice facility and in the meeting room and in front of cameras, then you don't have to second guess yourself on the field. And that fractions of seconds where you're second guessing yourself, if you're no longer doing that, it makes you a faster player. It makes you a faster team and it makes you quicker to read and react. So I'm, I'm pumped. This video went somewhere. I didn't know it was going to go. Oh, this, I, was kinda, this was kind of fun. I mean, like just talking about the difference between a good and bad culture. Like we got deep there for a second. I, like I that. love it. Love it, man. Yeah. I like that. Who's ending this video? Am I? I'll end it. I'll end it. Um, okay. Subscribe if you haven't. And <laughs> we make, we make videos on the lions and the pistons. So make That's sure true. you subscribe. We will see you on the next one. Adios. See ya.